Hi, I'm Melanie Banks with Century 21 Veterans and Water's Edge. Today, we're diving into an essential topic, compensation and commissions and how it affects your home sale. Knowing how real estate agents are paid and how commission works can help you make the best financial decisions when selling your home. So let's start with a common misconception. There are no standard or traditional commission rates in real estate. Commissions have always been negotiable and should reflect the experience, expertise, and a value that an agent brings. When signing a listing agreement with your agent, you're agreeing on compensation for their services. And remember, no one works for free. Historically, sellers often covered the buyer's agent commission, but recent changes are reshaping this. With new regulations following the settlement between the National Association of Realtors and the Department of Justice, buyers are now taking more responsibility for their agent's compensation. This means that the buyer will negotiate their agent fee directly, and both the buyer and their agent will agree on those terms before ever seeing any properties. How does this affect a seller? Well, with this structure, the MLS will no longer display commission details, and we won't know the exact terms between the buyer and their agent. This change allows for a more flexible approach when deciding on any concessions. As a seller, you have the option to offer a concession, such as a closing cost credit to help make your home more attractive. However, because we won't know the specific agreement between the buyer and their agent, we won't need to set a fixed amount up front. So instead, we can handle this on a case-by-case -case basis, potentially offering concessions only when necessary to make a deal work. The advantage of this? Well, consider a prospective buyer. For many, covering their down payment, closing costs, and now an agent's commission out of pocket, it could be challenging. By the seller marketing a concession, but keeping it open and flexible, we open up more possibilities to attract qualified buyers without committing to more than needed and ultimately increasing your bottom line. On a positive, gone are the days when agents would not show a home when they deem the commission too low for them. The buyer's agent negotiates with their buyer and then ultimately into the transaction. The bottom line, this creates a case-by-case -case strategy at our brokerage. We recommend handling concessions just like that with a focus on maximizing your bottom line, what you walk away with after the sale. We'll work together to consider the specific circumstances, level of interest, and marketing conditions to decide the best approach for each situation. With each offer, you will receive a net sheet that includes all information on the offer, including the buyer's agent concession, if needed, and your bottom net number. Let's face it, if the net is acceptable to you, the buyer's agent concession doesn't even matter. Ultimately, the goal is to keep your options open and responsive. In today's evolving market, this flexible strategy ensures your home remains attractive to buyers while safeguarding your financial outcome. So here's some questions to ask a listing agent before signing a listing agreement. What is your strategy on offering a commission to a buyer's agent? Do you have a set number for the buyer's agent or is it flexible? And why is your strategy best suited to sell my home? And the most important question, am I required to pay a buyer's agent commission? The reason I say this is to gauge the agent's experience. This topic has been brought up for over a year with NAR and the DOJ lawsuit, but the official change occurred August 17th of this year. You would be surprised at how many agents are uninformed about this market change. We have taken and taught extensive classes on this and are still one of the few who find this change to be a positive for home sellers. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next module.